All right, guys, welcome to today's video. It is late in the nursery season for us. We began on March the 29th, all the way through April, all the way through May, and it is now the end of the first week in June. And for us, this is getting to the very end of our spring nursery season. And what I wanna do today is kinda of give you a little bit of a look around out here and show you what things look like late in the nursery season. It's drastically different than it looked, say, around April the 1st. You, you get plants out here that have been out here too long. They're starting to look bad in their pots. There are things that we've sold out of. There are things that we've got too much of. And how do you deal with all of this stuff? And how do you make decisions about what to keep or what to try to get rid of, or you know, how do you manage all this? And that's one of the things that we're really putting our minds into this time of year is trying to figure out the next steps in our nursery going forward into a very hot summer. So with all of that in mind, let's dive in here today and let's see where we're gonna head next. So I got Chloe to come in with me because Chloe spends a lot of time doing our checkout. I mean, she probably checks out half the people that come through or more, it just depends on what day it is and what's going on. But you see a lot of what people have bought this year. And you know, what happens in our nursery is, you know, we've got all these different plants, kind of in, you know, a chunk of plants here, plant here, you got phlox here and you got dianthus here and you got hollies here. And, and what happens over time is you start having big holes yep. where people bought a lot of this or haven't bought any of this at all and it's just sat there. So what are you seeing that people bought a lot of? One thing I've seen a lot of that have gone this year is black elephant ears. And that's really interesting because we've never had those yeah. before. So that was an experiment. I think we sold like 75 black elephant ears, which seems like a million. It's like every time we had them, they would just go and go and we couldn't keep them. Butterfly bushes, we sold a ton of those, but we've had those in the past, so we kind of know that those are pretty good sellers. That's not any surprise to right, us. Right, yeah. right. Uh, same with hydrangeas, sold a lot of hydrangeas, but that's something that we've had before. Something that we had new this year, at least I'm pretty sure it was new, was canna lilies. Yes, I forgot about there those. There were especially a couple of weeks like canna lilies would get really popular and a lot of people would buy canna lilies, yeah. which was interesting because we'd never had those. Same with irises. Yes. Sold a lot of irises and had never had those. And as people buy stuff and we figure out what people like to buy, it gives us ideas for what we need to buy in as plugs and be growing out for next year. So something like the hummingbird mint, which we've sold a whole lot which of. Which that's the Agastache. Right, right. And, um, but we sold a lot of that this year and we didn't know that people bought hummingbird mint or Agastache like crazy. But now we do know, so we have small hummingbird mint that we're growing out for next year. Yeah, and that's one of the things about doing this. Uh, the longer that you do it, you just gain more and more confidence in, you know, let's say you're trying to buy in some plants from a wholesale nursery and you got a list of 600 plants and you don't even know what 400 of them even are. Yeah. But as time goes on, you know, you kind of start learning and you gain some confidence in what's going to sell well for you and what you can grow well and I, there's really not any way to do that besides just trial and error and time and putting you know putting the time into it to see how plants grow and what yeah. people buy so mm -hmm. as time goes on all these plants that we're naming we know that these are going to always be great sellers it doesn't mean they're going to be our number one seller every year but it's like a trickle yeah that, that's right which is the case with most plants yeah you just you sell you know, two or three or five every weekend mm -hmm. or, or sometimes every day, just depending on the plant. But all that to say, you know, we're learning as we go what sells well and what we grow well. And, you know, that's really important over time uh, in becoming more proficient and just better at doing your nursery. So then when we talk about plants that you have issues with at the end of the season, one of the things that most obviously comes to my mind is this disaster that's behind us here. And we've got a couple of other disasters, but I'll show you this a little better look here, but these are a Shasta daisy called Alaska. And we bought these sometimes last year and then we divided them. We sold quite a few of them, but we just divided way too many of these out. I mean, let's just say that we did a hundred of them and I, it may have been 200. We spent like an entire day just dividing these and maybe the snow capped daisies, but like it was a while. All right, let's say there was 150 of them. Yeah. We've sold like 30 or 40 of them. So they haven't sold yeah. great. They've sold okay, but there's just way too many of them. So what do you do 
with plants like this at the end of the season when you got way too many of them they're just flat out ugly i mean they are a disaster back here i mean there's probably a copperhead laying up in there they're so nasty and you know there's just different plants that you get this with when you either have too many of them or for whatever reason they didn't sell well and you know you got to figure out towards the end of your you know spring season what you're going to do with this because they certainly can't just stay in the pots forever because they're root bound and they've outgrown them so some of these daisies are like five and a half feet tall. yeah well it's i, mean, I think it one, fell over but... there's one i mean it's ridiculous i don't know if you could see that but it, they just they just look like a wild flowery mass back here yeah. so you know you have to figure out what you're going to do with plants like this as much as we would like for it to be the case, it's not just, well, you can just sell as many plants as you can get. If you can, you know, if you can propagate a thousand daisies, then you'll sell a thousand daisies and yeah. you'll make seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars. It just doesn't work that way. So what do you do with all of this stuff when you have a whole bunch of leftovers? So over here, just to show you another example that kind of what we're talking about, you know, what do you do with this? This is a tick seed and it's called Golden Sphere. And this thing was gorgeous about one to two weeks ago, maybe even three weeks ago. It was really pretty, and it was pretty for about three weeks. And we had quite a few of these, and this is just an example of one that's left. But, you know, you got all these deadheads on here now where it's bloomed and it's stopped blooming, and you're not going to be able to do anything with this. So it's an example. And, Chloe, what's going on over here? Yeah, we've got, like... I don't know, 20 geraniums or something over here. And they did look good at one time and we sold a lot of them, but now their blooms are just spent. I wonder if we cut these dead blooms off, I think they might bloom again. Like there's a bud coming and stuff, but, but they're you know, probably right root bound. now, right, but they're probably root bound. And right now they just don't look any good. So we bought geraniums in earlier in the season and we sold them. They looked great. We sold like all of them. And then we bought in a second batch and we didn't sell hardly any of those. And I don't really know why. Maybe it's just because it was later in the season, but this is something else that's just spent. And so people aren't going to buy this anymore because it doesn't look good. And you can look around our nursery and see different examples of this. We're just showing you a few here and there. But then the question is, is what do you do with stuff like this? So we've got ugly plants like these daisies, and I think, yeah, when I let go of it, it won't even stand up now. It's just gotten so top-heavy and root-bound. It's dry. Just a bad plant. You know, one of the things that you can do with plants is, of course, you can throw them out. Now, when I first started my nursery, I thought that every single plant that I had, I had to keep it until I sold it. Like, baby it along or repot it or divide it or whatever I could do and that every plant had to be kept. So one thing that you have to understand, and it's hard to get yourself into the mindset that it's not only okay, but that it's necessary to do that. Part of having a nursery is sometimes you have to throw plants away. And I mean, just throw them away. They're garbage. I mean, it's, it's not worth the effort and the time that it would take to revive, resuscitate, divide this and go forward with that process. So all of these Alaska Shasta daisies, every single one of them, we're going to throw them out. A couple of reasons. Number one, they're just huge, but I don't want this plant in my nursery anymore. There's another Shasta daisy that we have called the Snowcap that's much lower, and it's not so tall and crazy, and I want those. We've sold those. We'll divide those and look forward to having those. This plant, it won't be seeing my nursery again, so we're going to just get rid of them, and it's no problem to do that. So just understand, sometimes... You just have to throw stuff out. Compost them, do whatever you want to do with them. Just get rid of the darn things. Another thing that we do a lot of with plants that we just have too many of is keep them and divide them. Instead of throwing them away, some plants, like this little snowcap daisy, are useful for dividing them and having them next year. Now, we don't want to have like 600 snowcap daisies next year because you're not going to sell 600 of these daisies, but we do want to have like 50 or maybe 75 of them. We want a good supply because this plant is really pretty. It looks really good in a pot, and especially when you have several of them bunched together, and they're blooming it's just like a little solid daisy field and people really like it and I really like it as opposed to those Alaska daisies that are just they've that just, are so tall and oh, ridiculous they've just gotten and, insane and, and they have a place right. they definitely have a definitely. place and especially in a yard they would have a place but in a pot they just look like insane which is not good for what we do so like keeping the snow cap days you would keep it and divide it for next year but not have a million yeah, and we've showed you guys this before, but like this daisy, just this one, and we have probably several dozen of these still left. I mean, you can probably get, just looking in this pot, there's at least 15 divisions. 
daisies yep. divide into tiny little things. And then they grow out like, really fast. They so do. we'll be sharing some of these with you guys this winter as wholesale in our wholesale sale if you guys are interested in them at that time just kind of as a heads up but anyway these daisies are just a really nice plant that we want to keep having so as chloe said mm -hmm. we'll keep some of these and divide them so you can throw them away or you can divide them and we'll give you a third option a third thing is is that you can pot a plant up now this totally depends on the plant you're not want to just you're not going to want to just endlessly pot up daisies or hardly any perennials do you just want to keep potting them up into bigger pots but on a plant like our green giant that we grow and sell so many of you can take a number one green giant like this and this one's still got some room to grow in this pot it's not root bound yet and it's got some room to grow but when it is root bound and it is toward the end of the season you need to do something with it you can pot it up into a three gallon pot like this and this is about the difference that a year makes with a green giant so we also have green giants in three gallon pots. So what are we gonna do with them? I'm about to put some of these into five gallon pots. So, you know, I'd like to go to seven gallon pots, but I don't have any that big. So it depends on your plant on exactly what you might wanna do with it. But these green giants are sellable at, or they're marketable really from small trade ones to as big as you can grow them. So we're gonna keep growing them out. We're gonna keep just potting them up and you know I ultimately want to get to where we're doing wholesaling to landscapers and the like and that sort of thing which is something that you need to have bigger plants and bigger pots for you can do something like this effectively also with hydrangeas like you can just keep selling hydrangeas in bigger pots up to you know seven gallons or so and there's going to be a market for them so just because a plant didn't sell or because it's looking bad or dry and it's pot it's root bound whatever it doesn't mean that you have to throw it out. A plant like this that can't just be divided, it doesn't mean that you have to divide it. It might be that you just need to pot it up. And you know, that's a whole other discussion on what, what all plants you can and can or should or shouldn't pot up. But certainly a screening tree, you should always pot them up. Don't throw them out just because they're root bound. That's for sure. Because people want screens today. So they're willing to pay more money for bigger screening trees so that they can have like a fence of trees today. They don't have to wait so many years. And not wait on this guy to grow into a big tree. That's why screening trees are something that people are willing to buy big. And that's why we do so many of them. Mm -hmm. A fourth thing that you can do with your overgrown plants or your plants that are getting kind of stale into the season is that you can put them on clearance and you can mark everything down 50%, 10%, 20%, knock a dollar off of everything however you want to do it. And that is a really good way to get rid of a lot of plants because if people think they're getting a deal, uh, and they are, People think they're getting uh, something that's on sale. They will come in droves to buy them. And we discovered that last year when we had a clearance sale. So Yep, and I managed to miss that sale somehow. You did, because you were taking your ACT that day. I was, day. and I was so sad about missing it. So there's several things that you can do to try to deal with your end of the year, end of the season, overgrown, kind of spent plants. And you just got to not get stressed out about whatever it is that you decide to do with them and just get yourself a plan together. Think about what you might do with each individual plant and just go with it and move forward. And one way that I like to have a clearance sale is to say, you know, we're gonna be open Saturday morning, eight to 11 only, last day of the season, now or never kind of sale and just have this very short window of time with your prices, you know, low because you need to get rid of this stuff if you don't get rid of it you're going to throw it out so or a lot of it you are so anyway it's something good to do for your cust a good way to kind of appreciate your customers and just tell them thank you for coming because you got a lot of repeat customers and you know it may be a good way to find some new customers but doing a sale to me is a good idea but to just do it that one time a year at the very end and don't advertise it a lot ahead of time. Don't let people know you're doing it because they'll just sit around and wait and not buy your stuff when it's at regular price. But anyway, there's things that you can do to sell your plants and at least some of them. And selling some of them is better than not selling any of them at all when it gets towards the end of the season. So I highly recommend doing it. So the end is near, the end of plant selling season. And there's a lot of plants that are looking a little bit worn. So we're thinking through what we need to do with them going forward. And I hope that this video helps you guys think about what y'all might do with your own plants. I love y'all. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one.